Hello, I would like to welcome you to For Him Online Ministries. Here in the auditorium of Grace Baptist Church in Texas, Alice, Texas. And uh, would like to welcome you today. Uh, today's title is The Cost of Not Becoming a Christian. And I'll tell you right now, if you're lost, this price is far greater than you ever want to pay because you can't pay it. And uh, if you would, turn to Luke chapter 16, verses 22 and 23. Before we get into the message, I would like to pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless this message. Bless those that hear it. Those that are lost, wake them up. Those that think they're saved, wake them up. I pray for that, Lord. I pray that you will anoint your messenger. I pray, Lord, that Keith Watts will get totally out of the way. And the Holy Spirit will take full control of my mind and every word spoken. Oh, I pray for this. And now, Lord, I pray for the nation of Israel, peace for Jerusalem. I pray for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the Defense uh, Minister Gallant, uh, David Barnea, the Tobin Mossad, all of the generals, the officers, all of the soldiers that at this moment is in harm's way. Protect them. And, Lord, I pray they'll make all the right decisions, Lord, I pray. I pray for my beloved America. There's Americans in the Middle East that's in harm's way. Watch over them and keep them safe, Lord. I pray. I pray all of this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. If, if you're not praying for Israel every day, you need to start praying for Israel. Just a minute. Let me get a drink of water. Excuse me. But I want to go ahead and get in to the message. Luke chapter 16, verse 22, 23. Uh, before I start reading the two verses, uh, th this is story is about the prodigal son. The world thinks it's a parable. But the difference is, is when Jesus told a parable, it had a spiritual meaning in it, and he named no names in every one of them. This one here names everyone in it, Moses, Abraham, and Lazarus. The rich man's loss in hell, and I don't know why Jesus didn't name him, probably out of respect of the family, because they would know who it was. And uh, so, because the Jews keep up with the tree, family tree, uh, so much. But I want to go ahead and go in now. I'm only going to read two verses. And, uh, and it, uh, verse 22, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Abraham did not go to heaven because he was poor. Abraham went to heaven because he trusted in the future Messiah, Christ. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. The reason why uh, the rich man could see Abraham and Lazarus, the Old Testament saints, was in paradise, which was in the heart of the earth. After Christ rose from the grave, he got them all and moved them up to heaven. Price had been paid. So, but, uh, and I'll say this, the rich man didn't go to, die, uh, to hell because he was rich. The rich man went to hell because he worshipped money more than Christ. He didn't need Christ. He didn't have to look in the future 
towards Christ coming and dying on his sin for his sins. Dying on the cross for his sins. He he felt he had it all. And he did here on earth, but he died. And so here it is. And I, I preached this Sunday afternoon here at church. And uh, the Lord laid it upon my heart to preach it today on the YouTube channel. And uh, But listen to this. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. The rich man. The moment he died, he lifted up his eyes in hell. The moment Hitler died, he lifted up his eyes in hell. The moment Stalin died, he lifted up his eyes in hell. And on and on and on. But, but when I was going over this a while ago, before I came down to the auditorium, I was thinking about this. John Doe, the good man, lifted up his eyes and in hell. John Doe, the Baptist, lifted up his eyes and went to hell, was in hell. The John Doe, the church member, John Doe, that gave the money to the church. What happened? He never gave his heart to Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In hell. And I want to ask you this. What about you? You can put your name there. I can't. I'm saved. I can't. I cannot say it and mean it. Keith Watts died and went and lifted up his eyes in hell. It ain't going to happen. I'm bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. But what about you on Facebook? What about you on YouTube channel? What about it? You can put your name there. And so-and-so died and lifted up their eyes in hell. I pray that you get saved. It's time to wake up. There are billions of people who think they're going to heaven. There's, there's no telling how many Baptists, Catholics, Methodists, name it. They think they're going to heaven. And they're going to hell. So... I want to spend several minutes. I got this list years and years ago from somewhere, and I've added several to the list. And, um, and then we'll close in Revelation and also in Mark. Um, but I want to say this. Uh, what a loss this will be to those who die in their sins. What a loss. And the thing of it is, I already said it, but I'll say it again, you will never, ever pay in full your debt, your sin debt. Never. You never will, no matter what you do. A tri 100 trillion years from now, you will still be paying your debt, sin debt. And another 100 year, trillion, another 100 trillion, another 100 trillion years earth years, you will still be paying your sin debt. So we come to the first point. The forgiving love of God the Father, Abba. I can call him Abba. He's my daddy. He's my heavenly father. But if you're lost and die in your sins, you will never be able to say, Abba, Father, and I was thinking about this Sunday when I was going over the message before I preached. All of us are adopted in the family of God if we truly gave our heart and life to Christ. I did at 10 years old at Community Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. Never been the same. And I could call him Father because I'm adopted in his family. Remember what Jesus said to the Pharisees, Sadducees, Ye are of your father, the devil. That's you, if you're without Christ. 
that you this moment. And if you die in your sins without Christ, you will spend eternity with your Father. And I will spend eternity with my Father, my Heavenly Father. I will spend eternity with Him. And I want to say this to you. Uh, being forgiven feels good. You do something wrong, you go to them, and you ask forgiveness, and they accept it. You go do something wrong, you ask forgiveness, and they don't. Which one feels better? But this is far greater. God the Father forgave me. Completely forgave me. And you will never be able to call the Heavenly Father, Abba, which means Daddy, Father. You'll never be able to do that. Listen, listen to this. I want to talk a few minutes about debt, monetary debt, money. Uh, the USA, the national debt right now is over $34 trillion. And I read the other day again, where by March of this year, by the way, uh, next month, it'll reach over $35 trillion. What a massive debt. But you know what? Your sin don't compare to $35 trillion. It doesn't because the payment of your sin was the innocent shedding blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Per household in America, average, for every American household, from the East Coast to the West Coast, Hawaii and Alaska, uh, over $103,000. And if you have debt at your home, you know how devastating it could be. I have one debt, my car, and I'm halfway through. I pray that I can pay it off early and have no debt. I don't owe anybody but my car. And of course the insurance. You'll never be debt free from that here in America. Forgiven feels good. It really does. But I want to tell you what. Here's, here is the level of forgiven of debt. And I can't reach the level of forgiven by the Heavenly Father. It's too high. It's too high. The saving power of Christ, the Son of God. Lost person, you die and you sin, you will never experience that. I have never forgotten it. The Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, he never forgot it. He kept talking about it. I keep talking about Mary Nams, my Sunday school teacher. That Sunday morning, taking the Bible and leading me to Christ. I never will. Truly forgiven. You know, someone could tell you, I, I forgive you, but in their heart they don't. That's not truly forgiven. But I want to go a step further. Forget. Now, as human beings, we can forgive, but we can't forget. But we can't. Keep our mind on it and dwell on it because it'll tear you up. It'll destroy you. So if you truly forgive them, you move on. If the thought comes back of what they did, you move on. You know what? Start praying for them. If they don't forgive you, start praying for them. And that'll change your heart and your attitude towards them. I was thinking about this a while ago before I came down about truly forgiven. Yeah, forget. God can forget, by the way. That's the point. But I, here's the Bible. He cast it as far as the east is from the west. Wow. He puts the sin in the sea of forgetfulness. Never to remember it anymore. That's truly forgiven. That is truly forgiven. 
Because you never will experience the saving power of Jesus Christ by the Son of God, you won't have any victory. I was thinking about this earlier. Uh, the year that the Dallas Cowboys, I don't know, 16-0 and 0 or 15-1, and 1, Troy Aikman's first year. That wasn't a very fun year for us. Defeated, 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 de all year. But that's where you are if you're lost. You can try to improve yourself. You can buy a book of self-help. No victory. You can only have true victory in Jesus Christ. Because he's the one that has defeated the grave. Has hell, hell and the grave. Death, hell, and the grave. He's defeated it. When he rose up out of that grave, he has defeated it. And for the lost person that dies in your sins, you will always on this earth and in hell, in a lake of fire, experience defeat. No matter how much you pray, no matter what you do. You can be in hell in a lake of fire and ask Jesus for, to forgive you and come into your heart and it won't happen. Too late. Too late. Always defeated. The next one. The comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. I love this. I love one of his names. This one I use all the time. The great comforter. He helps us through the worst times in life, and we need it. And you will never, ever experience that. But I tell you what, and you won't have any hope for the present or the future. But without the comforting help of the great comforter, the Holy Spirit, you will experience anxiety. You'll experience fear. You will experience sorrow, pain, suffering. You will experience mental problems, health problems. Why? The Holy Spirit hadn't entered into you. And by the way, when you receive Christ as your Savior, you are immediately filled with the Holy Spirit. There is no baptism of the Holy Spirit. It only happened a few times in the first part of Acts at the early church to the Gentiles and to those in the upper room. And the Apostle Paul, I believe, talks about it. There's only, or Peter, there's only one baptism. It's what he said. So the Holy Spirit went or in immediately when you're saved and you're in the family of God. The assuring promises of his holy word. Wow. The assuring promises of his holy word. In this book that I hold in my hands right now, 8,810 promises. And the author of this book keeps 100%. He's batting 100% on keeping promises, isn't he? Oh, yeah. But for the lost person without Christ, and you die in your sins, you will never, ever experience any of those promises. You never will. Not one promise is for you. Oh, yeah, there's justice. There is a promise you'll die and go to hell. But I'm talking about good promises. Without the word of God, you're not able to live this life. Without the word of God, there is no hope. I, I, told, I said a while ago, you can buy a self-help book or whatever book. And by the way, you get any book on the face of the earth, and the author has a 8,810 promises in it and he keeps it, you're not going to find that except for one book. The Word of God. The Word of God. The joy of the service of the name of Jesus Christ. His prevailing name. 
What a name. The name above all names. No joy at all. And here on earth, at, a, at times, you may experience happy, happiness. Laugh at something, uh, something's funny, and you laugh and happy. That's happy. But there's a huge difference in joy and happy. Only the born-again Christian can ever experience joy and happiness. Only the lost if they don't get saved, will always experience happy, happy, but no joy. And here's the difference in this. In joy, when it's bad, God helps you through. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what the Bible says. But the lost, they go through Bad times, and there is no happy 100%. And they lose it. Or have lost it already. You can't get joy out of a bottle. You can't get joy out of a drug. You can't get joy out of pleasure. You can only get joy through the only one that can give it to you, Jesus Christ. If you're lost without Christ, you will never experience joy. Some of the happiest people, the happiest, not some, the happiest people I've ever met on the face of the earth are true born-again Christians that are going all out for Jesus Christ. Joy. And I'm telling you what, that, that happiness don't compare to any funny joke, and I'm talking about a clean joke. The world laughs at a evil, sick joke. And by the way, uh, some of the, the, uh, the main, one of the main groups in Hollywood that commit suicide are comedians. No joy, just happy, full of happy. But when the laughing is over and they're in the room by themselves and they're wasted on drugs and alcohol to try to fill void, only Jesus Christ can fill that void. No drug or alcohol or anything. And then the next one, the blessed hope of seeing him, being like him, and being with him. If you're lost, you will never experience any of those three things. You will be before him at the great white throne judgment, but it won't be a good experience. It won't be a good experience. The glories and the rewards of his everlasting kingdom. Never will you experience the presence of Jesus, presence of Jesus. Never, never will you experience the presence of a loving heavenly Father that loved you so much He gave His Son for you. Jesus loved you so much He gave His body for you. Both of them gave their all. There was there was nothing else to give. When, when God sent Jesus to heaven, oh, he robbed heaven of his precious only begotten son. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. You will never experience the presence of Jesus. And, and I say this so much. The best times I've ever had in my life in the presence of my Savior Jesus. There's no comparison to any drug or alcohol either. No comparison of anything on the face of the earth. Nothing. Or no one. No one. And then number eight. 
if you would turn to Revelation chapter 20 verse 14 and 15. The great wide throne judgment. I mentioned it just a few seconds ago. Listen to this. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you die in your sins without Jesus Christ, you will always, always experience eternal death. Verse 14, this is the second death, but you never will die and be comforted from the lake of fire. You never will experience it. You never will experience eternal life because you choose hell. God made a way. And you reject him. And you reject his way. And you're going to go your way, not God's way. Because you're the boss. Not a very good decision. And then the last one, which I think is worse than all the rest, in, in considering torments, God turning his back on you, lost person. There's some on the earth that have passed the point of no return. God's already turned his back on them. They just don't know it. They don't know it. But if you would, uh, turn to Mark. Chapter 15, verse 34. Mark, chapter 15, verse 34. Jesus is on the cross. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. And I, I said it in Sunday afternoon. When he said this, what I'm fixing to say, I believe he may have hurt the ears of those around him because he's God. And he cried as loud as he could. I wonder if Jerusalem, which was next to him, heard it. Everybody may have heard the cry. This is what he cried. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? It was because he knew that knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the sons of God. He became the sin. He became your sin. He became your sin. And you still reject him. It's got to be the worst. The worst. And then the last verse. Revelation chapter 21. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things passed away. For the lost that die in your sin, you will never experience. Verse 4. You never will. You can't. You haven't received Christ as your Savior. I want to tell you this. If you're lost, or you feel you're lost, go to my YouTube channel. And watch, uh, what can wash away my sins? And watch that message. I pray that you will. You have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of the week. Bye-bye.